If Will Crowther was the creator of the interactive fiction text adventure, Scott Adams was the father of the interactive fiction text adventure of microcomputer gaming industry. His first IFTA game was in 1978, titled Adventureland. Shortly after release and its phenomenal success, he formed Adventure International. Over the next five years, 13 more games of the Scott Adams Grand Adventures, or Saga as they are known, were released on most of the popular computers of the day. Sadly, in 1984, Adventure International was shut down. Throughout my research, I have found conflicting reports. Some sources claim that Scott copied Crowther and Wood's advent, also known as Colossal Cave Adventure. Others claim that he was inspired by Colossal, and still others claim that he played Colossal, but built his adventure land out of whole cloth. I am going to assume that the truth is somewhere in between. Adventureland has a very primitive parser, which uses a simple verb-noun structure. As with a lot of the games of the day, sometimes the commands it expects are not as intuitive as we have come to expect nowadays. But for the era, the vocabulary list of about 120 words was pretty good, and often had many variants it would accept for any given command. For example, I usually prefer to use the verb get, as in get bottle, but the parser also accepts take, as in take bottle. Another important bit of information. The parser only looks at the first three letters of a word. Even so, I will be using the full words for ease of understanding. For this session, we will be running through Adventureland on a TRS-80 Model 1, though the game was initially distributed on a 16K cassette for $14.95. We will be using a floppy disk-based conversion run on Tristos 2.3. I thought about running this on a Model 3, or even using new DOS 80, just for a little flavor enhancement, but once it's running, you really do not see any real difference. Since we are currently sitting in Level 2 Basic, which is a cassette-operated system, we're going to hit Reset with the Tristos disk in the floppy drive. Bring up Tristos, Disk Operating System, version 2.3. As you can see, this is the standard Tristosk number one disc. So we will go and look at our second disc, Adventure, which is SA01416 Alpha. And that should load. It is asking if we want to restore a previous game. The answer is no. Now this is the splash screen for the startup of the first adventure game. It reads, Adventure, version 7.7, .7, Adventure number 1, version 4.5. Copyright Adams, 1979, Box 3435, Longwood, Florida. Phone 1-305-862-6917. This program will allow you to have an adventure without ever leaving your armchair. You will find yourself in a strange new world. You will be able to look at, pick up, and otherwise manipulate the objects you find there. You will also be able to travel from location to location. I will be your puppet in this adventure. You command me with two-word English sentences. I have over a 120-word vocabulary, so if a word doesn't work, try another. Some commands I know. Help, save, score, inventory, quit. The author has worked over a year on this program and is currently writing many new adventures, so please, don't copy or accept a pirated copy of Adventure. Press Enter. The first most obvious thing to point out here is that this is a primitive version of a split-screen interface. Everything above the line stays static, while everything below the line may change. And when I say stays static, I mean stays static per room. So there is always a description of the room above where you are typing. As per many of the previous games that I have worked on, I have taken the time to solve this and write down the path that I wish to take. I am in a forest, visible items, trees. Some obvious exits are north, south, east, and west. A voice booms out. Welcome to adventure number one, adventure land. In this adventure, you're to find treasures and store them away. To see how well you're doing, say score. Remember, you can always say help. Tell me what to do. Being that this is a split-screen interface, we may run into some problems, though I assume they will be minor and we will figure this out together. We are going to start by going east. I am in a sunny meadow. Visible items, large sleeping dragon. Sign here says, in many cases, mud is good. In others, some obvious exits, south, east, and west. We do not wish to mess with the dragon right now. Instead, we're going to go south. I am in a dismal swamp. Visible items, cypress tree, evil-smelling mud, 
swamp gas, patches of oily slime, chiggers. Some obvious exits are north, east, and west. We want to climb the tree. I am in the top of a tall cypress tree. Visible items, spider web with writing on it, ring of skeleton keys. Some obvious exits are down. Let's have a look at what the writing in the web is. Chopper down. Let's get the keys and then go down. We are back in the dismal swamp next to the cypress tree with the evil smelling mud, swamp gas, patches of oily slime, and chiggers. We're going to end up here a lot through this, so I'm not going to read it every single time. We want to go east. I am at the edge of a bottomless hole. Visible items, large outdoor advertisement, hole. Some obvious exits are north and west. I think this is amusing. Read advertisement. Check with your favorite computer dealer for the next adventure program, Pirate Adventure. If they don't carry adventure, have them call 1-305-862-6917 today. That is excellent advertising, I think. Let's go north. I'm at the shore of a lake. Visible items, water, golden fish, rusty axe, magic word bunion on it. Sign says no swimming allowed here. Some obvious exits are north, south, and west. We are going to get the axe. We cannot get the fish right now, and we're not going to go swimming. Instead, we are going to go south, which leads us back to the bottomless hole with the advertisement, and then we are going to go west. We're back to the tree with the evil smelling mud and the swamp gas. We are going to do what the spider web tells us. Chop the tree. I am in a dismal swamp. Visible items, hollow stump and remains of a felled tree. Evil smelling mud, swamp gas, patches of oily slime, chiggers. Obvious exits are north, east, and west. We are going to go west now. I am in a hidden grove. Visible items, jeweled fruit, sign says Paul's place. Some obvious exits are north and east. Let's get the fruit. As you can see, it has the asterisks on either side. That means that it is a treasure. We want to return back to the hollow stump where the evil smelling mud and the chiggers are and go stump. I am in a damp hollow stump in the swamp. Visible items, old fashioned brass lamp, water in bottle, sign, leave treasures here, then say score. Some obvious exits are up and down. Oh, I was bitten by chiggers. Let's get out of there back to the remains where the evil smelling mud is. When you are bitten by chiggers, you have to get mud. Boy, that really hit the spot. And then drop the mud. Otherwise, it could get infected. Go stump. Now we're back where the sign with the treasures are. Here we want to drop the axe. Drop the fruit. And get the lamp. Go down. In a root chamber under the stump. Visible items. Dark hole pot of rubies. Some obvious exits are up. Let's get the rubies. Let's go up. Drop the rubies. And at this point I'm going to show you what happens if you rub the lamp. A glowing genie appears, drops something, then vanishes. Notice our treasures now have a diamond ring added. And as an added evil, if you rub the lamp a second time, you get a diamond bracelet. You need to rub the lamp twice. Rubbing the lamp a third time does not bring another treasure. So from here we go back down to where we got the rubies from, and we want to go hole. I am in a semi-dark hole by the root chamber. Visible items, locked doors. Obvious exits are up. Let's unlock the door. I'm in a semi-dark room by the root chamber. Visible items, open door with a hallway beyond. Obvious exits are up. We do not need the keys anymore. This is another one of those games where the amount we can carry in our inventory is limited, so carrying anything extra is not something we really want. Let's go back up through the root chamber, up to the stump, up again, and this puts us in the dismal swamp. I want to go east at the edge of a bottomless hole with the advertisement just occurred to me I probably could have gotten this earlier. I'm going to go in the hole. I'm on the ledge just below the rim of a bottomless hole. I don't think I want to go down. Visible items, flint and steel. Obvious exits up and down. Let's get the flint and steel and then let's go up again. 
west again and then back into the stump. From here we are going to go down, go into the hole. This is where we opened the door and dropped the keys and there is a hallway here and we want to go hallway. It's too dark to see. We do not want to go wandering around without a light because we will fall and get ourselves killed. So our next step is to light the lamp. Lamp burns with cold, flameless blue glow. I'm in a long, down-sloping hall. Some obvious exits are up, down. Some people may wonder, why did I wait until after I was in the dark room to light the lamp when I could have lit the lamp before going into the hallway? The answer is fairly simple. The lamp has a limited amount of turns it can burn. When it burns out, it is gone. Each time that I can wait one extra turn before lighting the lamp, I am going to, so that I have one extra turn in case something goes wrong and I need to spend some time wandering around. Anyway, we are going to go down in a large cavern with obvious exits north, south, west, up, and down. I'm going to go down again in a maze of pits, visible items. The sign here says opposite of light is unlight. Obvious exits north, south, east, and down. Go down again. In a maze of pits, obvious exits are west and up. We are going to go west. A maze of pits, visible items, strange scratchings on rock says Aladdin was here. Some obvious exits are north, south, east, west, up, and down. We are going to go down one more time. In a maze of pits, visible items, thick Persian rug, arrow pointing down. Some obvious exits are north, south, east, west, up, and down. Let's get the rug. From here, go even deeper down. At the bottom of a very deep chasm, high above me is a pair of ledges. One has a bricked up window across its face, the other faces a throne room. Visible items, golden net. Sign, magic word is away. Look la, rest of sign is missing. Stream of lava, obvious exits are up. Let's get the net. Now, from here what I want to do is preserve my lamp as much as possible. I could work my way back up the way we came down, but that is going to take a lot of times of moving with my lamp on. Instead, I'm going to use a feature that Scott built into his game as sort of a fast travel exploit, and that is to unlight my lamp where it is too dark to see, and then go west. It's dangerous to move in the dark. I fell and I broke my neck. I am dead. I am a large misty room with strange unreadable letters all over the exits. Visible items. Sign says limbo. Find the right exit and live again. Some obvious exits are north, south, east, west, up, and down. Since my lamp is off, I do not mind however many turns it takes me to get out of here, but I already know that I need to go up to the top of an oak. To the east I see a meadow, beyond that a lake. Obvious exits are down. Go down. In a forest, visible items, trees. Some obvious exits are north, south, east, and west. And from here, go east to where the sleeping dragon is, and go south. And we are back to the hollow stump and remains of a felled tree. And we want to go stump. I am not going to drop any of my treasures right now, because they're going to come in as important later. So I am going to get the bottle. Remember, the bottle has water in it. And then we are going to go up out of the stump. We are going to head east. That is the edge of the bottomless hole. Then we are going to go north. And this is the shore of a lake with visible items, water, golden fish, a sign that says no swimming allowed here, with the exits north, south, and west. Remember earlier we skipped the fish. That is because we were not carrying the net. We also need the bottle because we have to have a way to carry the fish. Get the fish, still on the shore of the lake. And then we return south and then west to the swamp and go back into the stump. Let's do an inventory here, carrying the following. Golden fish, old-fashioned brass lamp, water in bottle, golden net, flint and steel, thick Persian rug. Let us drop the fish and we want to drop the net. We also do not need the bottle for right now. 
so we will drop it. We will be picking it back up later. I just like to keep my inventory clear. And then we need to get the rusty axe with the magic word bunion on it. Let's go up out of the stump back into the swamp. And while we are here, we are going to... I have it written down, but I should show you. We are carrying a lamp, the axe, flint and steel, and the rug. We are going to drop the lamp. Then we are going to drop the flint. And then we are going to drop the rug. We have been bitten by chiggers again, so let's get the mud, which really hits the spot. Drop the mud. And then we are going to inventory to make sure we only have the X. Then we want to go east, which takes us to the edge of the bottomless hole with the advertisement. Go north to the shore of the lake where no swimming is allowed. Go north again. In a quick sand bog, visible items, small statue of a blue ox. Let's get the statue because it is a treasure. And at this point we want to, because we cannot carry the ox out of the sand bog on our own, we want to use the magic word. Say, bonion. We are carrying nothing at all. We are in the quick sand bog. Let us swim out of there. We are now at the shore of the lake. Visible items are water and a sign saying no swimming there. This is where we got the fish. We need to go west to the sunny meadow with a sleeping dragon. Then we go west again. Go south. I have managed to get myself lost in the forest again. Let's go north, east, east. We were supposed to go south to the bottomless hole, then west and then west. And we are in a hidden grove. Visible items, rusty axe, magic word bunion on it, small statue of a blue ox, sign says Paul's place. We want to get the ox, then return east, where we are at the hollow stump, remains of the felled tree in the dismal swamp. And there we need to get our lamp. We need to get our flint. We need to get the rug. We need to go back into the stump. We need to inventory. Notice we are carrying the Persian log and the statue of a blue ox. Let's drop the statue of the blue ox and then get the bottle again. From here we are going to go back underground, so we go down into the root chamber, go into the hole where we are in the dark hole by the root chamber, where we dropped the skeleton keys and opened the door. We want to go hallway. It's too dark to see, so we light our lamp. We go down in a large cavern. We go south. We are in a royal anteroom. Visible items, empty wine bladder. Some obvious exits are north and up. We get the bladder. And then we return north, up, and then we unlight the lamp. As you see, it is too dark to see because I have turned the lamp off in the same place where I turned it on. But I know I can move one direction safely back into the semi-dark hole by the root chamber. We want to travel up until we get to the swamp. So we go up to the dark hole, up to the stump, and up to the dismal swamp. We are bitten by chiggers again. So let's get the mud. Drop the mud. We want to fill the bladder with swamp gas. So we get gas. Then we go back into the stump. We go down. We go into the hole. And then we go into the hallway. And then we light our lamp again. Since we are in a long down sloping hall with exits up and down, we want to go down because up would take us back into an area where we could see. And we are in a large cavern with obvious exits to the north, south, west, up and down. We want to go south to the royal anteroom with the obvious exits of north and up. Let us go up and we are in the royal chamber. Visible items, bricked up window, obvious exit is down. Let's. Drop the bladder because it is full of gas. 
it is a distended gas bladder, and then light the gas. I am in a royal chamber. Visible items, bricked up window with a hole in it, loose fire bricks. Obvious exits are down. If you notice, the gas bladder blew up. So we are going to go hole, and we're in a narrow ledge by a chasm. Across the chasm is a throne room. Obvious exit is west. Let's jump the chasm. I am on a narrow ledge by the throne room. Across the chasm is another ledge. Visible items, very thin black bear. Magic mirror. We need to scare the bear. And the best way to do that is to scream. Bear is startled that he fell off the ledge. I am on a narrow ledge by a throne room. Across the chasm is another ledge. Visible items, magic mirror. Let's get the mirror. Then go throne room. I am in the throne room. Visible items, gold crown. Obvious exits, west. Let's get the crown. And this is another one of those times where we are going to try and use the fast travel. So we are going to unlight our lamp. Lamp is off. Let's go west. It's dangerous to move in the dark. Go west again. I fell and broke my neck. I am dead. Tell me what to do. I'm in a large misty room with strange unreadable letters all over the exits. Visible items. Sign says limbo. Find right exit and live again. Some obvious exits are north, south, east, west, up, and down. We are going to go and follow the same path we did before, which was up into the oak, down into the trees, east, which leads us to the dragon, and south, where we are in the swamp. We are not being bitten by triggers this time. We're going to go to the stump. As you see, we have a lot of treasures gathered here already, but we are going to add more. Here, we are going to drop a crown. Now we have a mirror and we have a Persian rug. If I were to drop the mirror, it will break. I do not wish that to happen. I figured this out uh, because of Colossal Cave Adventure, as well as Pyramid 2000, both using the same mechanic with the vase. So we drop the rug, and then we drop the mirror. The mirror lands softly on the rug, lights up and says, Dragon Sting, and fades. I don't get it. I hope you do. That is actually a hint to a solution to one of the puzzles. And so what we are going to do is we are going to go down into the root chamber and go hole. As I said, we will do this many times. And then we're going to go to the hallway where it is too dark to see. We will light the lamp. The lamp burns with a cold, flameless blue glow. Then we will go down into the large cavern, go south into the royal anteroom, go up where we blew the hole in the window. We want to, we want to get bricks. They're heavy. Now we want to go down again, back to the anteroom, and instead this time we're going north in the large cavern, and then we are going to go down to the maze of pits where it says opposite of right to sunlight. We've already been here. Go down again into the maze of pits, and instead of going up to return, we're going west, where the scratching says Aladdin was here. Then we are going to go down. In a maze of pits, visible items are an arrow pointing down. Obvious exits are north, south, east, west, up and down. And we are going to go down one more time. I am at the bottom of a very deep chasm. High above me is a pair of ledges. One has a bricked up window across its face. The other faces a throne room. Sign says, magic word is a way. Look la. The rest of the sign is missing. Stream of lava, slightly woozy bear. Some obvious exits are up. I'm sure you remember this room. This is where we got the rug. So what we want to do at this point is drop the bricks and then build a dam. Bottom of a very deep chasm. High above me is the pair of ledges. One has a bricked window across its face. The other face is a throne room. Glowing firestone is now available. Glowing, though, means we do not want to get it yet. It is too hot. So instead, we are going to pour water, sizzle, and as you see, it says Firestone cold now. So we get the Firestone, and then again, I'm going to use death to our advantage. And we are going to go east. It's dangerous to move in the dark. 
I fell and broke my neck. I am dead. We are going to try and take a little bit of a detour on our way back. We are going to go up into the oak, down into the forest of trees, go east for the sleeping dragon, go east again to the water. I want to get water. Now I have water. I want to go west back to the dragon and go south. I needed the water for part of a puzzle coming up, and I will explain it in just a moment. Let us go into the stump and then do an inventory. As you see, I am carrying the firestone, so let's drop the firestone. Now let's head back out into the swamp, and we want to get the mud. I figured out that the mud will dry if you have it for too long, and it is important that it does not dry, so if you have water with you, you can keep the mud damp. Otherwise it dries and you have to come back and get mud and hope that you will eventually have enough time between when you get it and go to the next puzzle that it does not dry and fall off. Let's go stump again. Then we want to go down into the root chamber. Then we go hole and then go to the hallway. Here we need to light the lamp which burns with a cold, flameless blue glow, and we're in the long, sloping hallway. We go down, and then we want to go, we're in the large cavern, we want to go north into the long tunnel. I hear a buzzing ahead. Continue going north. I am in a large, eight-sided room. Visible items, royal honey, large African bees. Some obvious exits are south. We need the mud to protect us from the bees. Let's get the honey. Large African bees are still there. We need those bees. So let's empty our water. It soaks into the ground. And then get the bees. At this point, I'm going to take us the long route back so you can get a feeling for how it runs when we do not just kill ourselves. And we will go south into the long tunnel, south again. And then let's just continue going up until we get into the swamp. We are now in the swamp. And from here, let's drop the mud, head north. In a large, sunny meadow, visible items, large sleeping dragon. Sign here says, in many cases, mud is good. In others, let's drop the bees. The bees attack the dragon, which gets so annoyed, it gets up and flies away. So now there are large African bees here, a sign that says, in many cases, mud is good. In others, and dragon eggs, which are very rare. Let's get the eggs and then we shall return back to the stump. Did you notice the the puzzle which required the bees that the mirror told us about? I'm pretty sure you did. So we go south, back into the swamp, go into the stump, and here, let's make sure of what we're carrying. We need to drop the honey, and we need to drop the eggs. And then drop the eggs. There is a pot of rubies, golden fish, golden net, royal honey, thick Persian rug, golden crown, magic mirror, dragon eggs, jeweled fruit, small statue of blue ox, diamond ring, diamond bracelet, and firestone. Cold now. That is 13 treasures that have all been returned to the leave treasures here sign. So we are going to say score. I stored 13 treasures. On a scale of 0 to 100, that rates 100. Fantastic, you solved it all. This adventure is over. Want to try this adventure again? I am going to say no. And it takes me back to the Tristos 2.3 operating system. As you saw, it was relatively simplistic, but made use of many common logic problems. Would I say it was ripped off from Colossal Cave Adventure? No. What I would say is that it was heavily inspired by it, having some similarities, but only one feeling like it was stolen. Perhaps the problem is that Scott elected to name his creation Adventurant, and that title being so much like Advent, which was short for Adventure, just gave birth to so many rumors by people who had heard of Colossal, but had never played it, only played Adventureland. In the end, I really do not know. I just want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. I really enjoyed running this together. 
I'm sorry about that one point that I went the wrong direction for a spell. That happens sometimes, no matter how well prepared you think you are. And instead of editing it out, I like to leave the things in that you can see, that I'm just a human girl trying to figure things out like all other humans, and I'm capable of flaws. Next, I'll be recording a go-through of this game on the Coco, which I'm looking forward to. In that one, I plan only to use maps. No preset path deciding in advance. I should know the game well enough by now. I spent a week exploring it, after all. As usual, if you have any questions, comments, or considerations, please feel free to leave them in my comments section. I will answer them as soon as I can. And if you have any requests, I would be overjoyed to look at them. I'm still procrastinating with Zork, though. It's a huge game, that, and I'm trying to build a good library of Let's Plays, as well as experience before I try to tackle one that large. Feel free to share this Let's Play with others. Extra viewership is always a win-win situation. Even better, click like and or subscribe. The more people who are watching, the more motivated I'll be. With that in mind, be good to each other, and I look forward to our next adventure together.